About halfway through the year, I made some predictions about what the real estate market was going to do through 2022 here in Roseville, California. I wanted to share with you what real estate would look like by the end of this year. And if you want, you can go back and you can check out that video, but, and the link is probably somewhere in the description, but today I'm going to look back on those predictions to see if I was right or wrong about those predictions. We're not quite at the end of the year yet, but we're close enough to where we can pretty much determine where, we're, where things are going to shake out. So in this video, I'll be sharing what kinds of shifts we saw in the market and also how far off or not my predictions were. And then in addition to that, it's going to help you make some decisions as to what you think real estate might look like in 2023. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit as well. Okay, let's start with a win or at least a close win. Something that I was pretty much right about is new listings hitting the market. I said that we would see an increase in standing inventory, but a decrease in the amount of new listings hitting the market. I predicted that we'd have about 2,800 new listings. As of November 1st, the total new listings is about 2,384. More than likely, we'll see about 300 in total through November and December, which will round us out to just under 2,700 homes to hit the market. So I was not right on, but I was not too far off. Not too bad. Here's where I was wrong. I thought that the average seller would retain 98% of their asking price. With the drastic shift that we saw in the market between August and really October, sellers were caught off guard by the price change. And quite honestly, they're still not pricing their properties correctly based on where we're at in the market. So many of the sellers, because their pricing was not appropriate in the first place, have sold their home for significantly less than their original asking price. The current month's average is 95% of the original list to sales price ratio. I actually think that number will increase just a little bit and we might end off the year closer to 98%. So I won't fully be wrong as sellers have adjusted and started to price their homes appropriately. However, like I mentioned earlier, there are still plenty of sellers that have not made that adjustment and are not pricing their homes appropriately. So that's that. Here's where I was right. The average days on market will increase. That's a pretty easy prediction to make because the average days on market was so low in the past. I was actually predicting 35 days on the market by the end of the year. And I thought that was going to be a little bit high in comparison to what was actually happening. I was actually right. It is currently 35 days on the market. However, by the time we're hitting the end of the year, more than likely it's going to be closer to 40 days on market. If we look at the number of listings that are closed and pending right now, the average days on market for those ones is 40 days. Here's where else I was right. Standing inventory will be around 2.4 months and we are currently at 2.3 with not many new listings hitting the market and with the recent little dip that we saw in interest rates, I expect to see more inventory absorbed and we will have less actually than 2.3 months of supply by the end of the year. Here's where I was wrong. I predicted that the average sales price will be 714,000. So back in late July when I made that video or early August is when I pushed it out, that prediction was based on me thinking that prices were going to stay flat. The average sales price at that time was 717000 So knowing that we were going into a shifting market, it was extremely optimistic of me to say that prices would essentially just stay flat. What I didn't see coming though was an even more drastic increase in interest rates. We went from basically like 4.9% up to over 7% in less than three months. That's a heat that had a massive impact on pricing and the overall speed of our market. And also, there were some positives that came from that because it, it did slow down the amount of new homes that hit the market. Some people were discouraged from selling because they no longer wanted to buy, etc. So it did help flatten the amount of inventory that we had. And ultimately, I think it helped pad what could have been a, an even more massive correction or, or overcorrection in the marketplace. The average price as of this last month was 644,000. And my guess is that we will end up near 624,000 on average by the end of the year. 
So I will most likely be wrong by about $90,000 to $100,000. However, I was right also about decreased sales. I did predict that there would be a decrease in buyer demand and overall less sales would occur this at the end of this year than last. I predicted 2,000 homes sold and so far we're at 1,683 homes sold. 258 homes are closed and pending. So we'll pretty much hit 2,000 homes sold by the end of this year in Roseville. By the way, that's about the lowest number of sales that we've seen since 2014. Here's where else I was wrong and a little bit hopefully optimistic was that the Goolsby Group would help 65 families buy or sell a home in 2022. That was a hopeful prediction. As we just talked about, sales have been down this year. They're down by about 17%, close to almost 20%. Our, our group here will end up helping about 45 families by the end of 2022. And speaking of helping families, hey, I'm not always going to nail these predictions. In fact, if you go back and watch my last video, making predictions is something I almost never do on a public scale like this. Oftentimes, I make predictions when, it when we're in a strategy session. And they're not so much predictions as they are projections. Here's what the trends are. Here's what our timeline looks like, and here's where I expect the market to be by the time we're ready to buy or sell. So speaking of helping more families, it is our mission to help people win. And during this challenging time in real estate, it can be really hard to, to craft a winning strategy, but it's something that I'm passionate about. If you look at all of our recent reviews, we've helped clients through this shift that yes, they did sell their home for less than they were originally hoping to sell their home for because they planned on selling their home in July and put their home on the market in August. And as we know from this video, market conditions change drastically. But what's common in all of our most recent clients is their glowing review. And I don't say that to brag or to boast, but I say that to impress upon you the importance of care and attention that we provide to our clients during these challenging times. Strategy is incredibly important. Marketing is more important than ever. How you present your home online and in person is still very, very important. And that's a part of our winning strategy that we've used for our clients for the last decade. And we're happy to still be fine tuning, tweaking and improving on that process. So if you would like to be one of those 65 families or individuals that's purchasing or selling a home in 2023, please reach out to me. Now is the time that we get started with crafting that plan. I'm Jeff Goolsby from the Goolsby Group. It's my mission to help people win in real estate. Thank you for watching this video. If you wanna see more information about real estate, subscribe to the channel, click the button somewhere and see our real estate updates and tips on how to win in the market.